Hi, welcome to Sewist. Today I've got a demonstration for you to make a simple face mask for you to wear when you're in shops and museums and generally mixing with the, generally mixing with the general public. You know what I mean. Now they're mandatory in the UK, you might as well make the most of it and use up some of those scraps of fabric to make some pretty masks instead of those horrible blue disposable ones. These are made from two layers of quilting cotton. It's quite um, a good weave of cotton. You know, you can't see a lot of daylight through them. If you're in a position to check the, the general advice as to how many layers, please do. I am afraid I can't guarantee this will protect you, but it will offer some protection um, going by World Health Authority advice. Now, we've done another demonstration over on the Crafts Channel, which, is show, which I show you how to actually draw the mask yourself. But we have got a template for this down in the description below. And one thing I did find is I've got a lot of scraps of fabric that weren't actually big enough to make two sides of directional fabric in the right place. So what I was doing was I was cutting a piece of fabric and much to my dismay, it was ending up about two, three centimetres short. But it was really nice fabric. So, simple way around it is just to cut yourself some other pieces of fabric that you will sew between to pad it out a bit. I'm not explaining that very well. I'll show you. We'll get started. You need to cut two sets of cotton fabric, right sides together from the mask, and just slightly pin around that front curve. And make sure your needle is set to the middle. Sew around that front curve. With your normal six mil or quarter inch seam allowance. Do the same with the other pair. like so. And then normally what I would do is this seam at the front, I would press it to one side. Um, normally when you do a curved seam, you would clip into it. I'm going to resist the urge to do that because I want to make sure that I've got the maximum amount of integrity in the fabric over my nose and mouth. I'm not going to press that at the minute because I want to try and keep this video a little bit shorter than they normally are. But open out your two pieces. Cut the piece of fabric so it's the depth of your mask and just about double what you were short of when you cut your mask from your template. So this was about two centimetres short. The piece that I've cut is actually four centimetres short. Might be a bit big, but we'll see. Oops, four, that is six centimetres. It should be four. So line it up to the long edge right sides together. And then take this other piece and again sew it. So what you're doing is you're creating a gutter between the two pieces. Just in a coordinating fabric. Because you know me, I hate waste. And I've got boxes and boxes of pieces of fabric that are too small to do anything with, but too big to throw away. I'd love to do patch, patchwork face masks, but to be honest, the number of seams in them would, I think, negate any protection that you'd get from the fabric. So you've got mask, gutter, mask, gutter, and then take that final gutter, Pair it up to the 
other edge of the mask. At some point I'm going to find a way of sticking my foot pedal to the floor. So you have a tube. It looks a little bit like a pair of underpants, but it's not. And then line up your centre seams on the bottom. And along the top. And also at the junction of where your gutter fits. Now it doesn't matter if the gutter doesn't pair up exactly, if it's longer one side than it is the other, because that gutter is going to be turned in to create a channel for the elastic. So it doesn't have to be a perfect match. So sew from one end and while you're sewing along the bottom edge just stop and back stitch, take it out of the machine and then start again about two, three centimetres away, so you've left yourself a gap for turning out. It's easiest to leave that gap on the bottom straight edge, so that when you top stitch it, you've got a nice smooth line. And then on the top curved edge, where you've got the bridge of the nose, you can just sew straight along. I say straight along, it's actually easier on that bridge of the nose bit if you stop with the needle in and just pivot your fabric so you get a, a proper angle on it. So there you go. Clip your corners off so you've got nice neat corners. Pop your finger inside the gap. And take it up to the furthest corner and then just pull it through. Ooh. And I tend to use a quite a, a large knitting needle needle knitting needle knitting needle to push out the corners because it's, it's got a point on it but it's too big to actually go through those seams. I used to use one point of my pair of scissors the number of times I ripped through a seam. Doesn't even bear thinking about. Push them out, tuck in the raw edges of your gap and if you've got time give these seams a press. I'm just very quickly going to top stitch these. And I'm just going to manipulate the seam as I run it through the machine. Taking out any little strange pieces of thread I find on the way. Same with the top one. I'm actually just going to pop a pin in that top, top part now.
So there you go. So what that's done is that's brought that mask up. to the size of the template. Obviously it's a bit smaller because now your seam allowance has been taken out. But it does mean that you're not then resigned to just using the fabric that is wide enough to use. And then I would just fold in about a centimetre, centimetre and a half of the ends. and just top stitch it. And I'm just moving my needle position over to the left so that I can get a nice clean seam, top stitch seam, close to the edge of the fabric. This is the shoddiest piece of stitching in the world. I do apologise. You know what it's like though, I, I can virtually make masks with my eyes closed now. When I come to actually making them and being filmed making them doesn't always go to plan. So there's your two channels. Um, I've found that the easiest way to, to measure your elastic to start with, they go through it and back through it and then add another five centimetres for you to tie the reef knot. Uh, sometimes I want it a little bit tighter, so actually I'm going to do this only about three centimetres extra. I'm risking this because when I try this on, if it then pings off my ears, it will look foolish. Um, if you struggle with your elastic, this is six mil uh, black flat elastic. And if you made your channels wide enough, it, you should just be able to poke it through without the darning needle. You watch me now not be able to poke this through without a darning needle. Oh, there are times when I just wish I'd used a darning needle to start with. Oh, the other thing you can do actually, if you've got a piping turner, even better. Pop your piping turner through the hole, put your elastic onto it, pull it back. Ooh. Guess how I'm uh, elasticating masks from now on. Make sure, try and make sure your elastic isn't twisted in there, just a personal preference. And then tie an overhand knot and then back on itself to make a reef knot. And pull it tight. And then just thread your ends back Ooh. through the channel to hide the knot. Different people have different size faces and different ear positions and different nose positions. There is not, I don't think, one size fits all, but if you are making these for friends and family, if you just supply them with elastic that's threaded through but either knotted loosely or not knotted at all, then they can just adjust it to fit their own face. <coughs> Excuse me. So this, pop it on your nose, pop the elastic over your ears, get your earrings out of the way.
And it's quite a nice fit under the eyes. There's no gap because of the shape of it. There is no gap under the eyes. It's quite nice under the chin. I can actually do with tightening that elastic up a little bit more just to give it tightness around my ears. But actually, it's fitting my face, my jawline, really well. So it is very easy to make. The other thing that uh, we've done is we've actually come up with some little designs just to cheer people up if they're wearing a mask. And they're very easily put on to a mask with um, decals that I've cut with a Cricut maker and they're iron on vinyl. And I've found the easiest way to do that is turn your iron on to start with, always helps. About setting two, I've found. Preheat your mask. Pop your decal on. Let's see if I can find a Too low down. Well, it would be better on the flower, wouldn't it? Oh, I can't decide where to put it. Oh, I'll pop it up there. And just press it down a couple of seconds. And then you can just peel away the backing. And I've found the best way to uh, make sure that that vinyl is on firmly is to then iron it from the inside. So you can design anything that you want, really, word-wise. So there you go. Um, I'm hoping that helps. There's a lot of people who have asked me about masks. And a lot of people have found masks are uncomfortable, but all of my friends that have tried these have said that they are the easiest to wear. Um, you can breathe through them. They don't make you sweat too much. They're easy to put on and off. I mean, even my dad. I mean, my dad's a bit fumbly with his fingers. He can wear them quite happily, so there must be some benefit in there. <laughs> but just have fun. It's a great way to use up all those scraps of fabric. It's a great way to cheer up your shopping experience because no one's seen a smile and shop for quite a while now. But at least if you can go out in a nice, brightly coloured mask, you might make somebody else's day. Thank you very much for watching. Come and see us again very, very soon. We've got lots of other ideas for you in the pipeline. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you soon. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by the Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.